All right, we can shuffle our cards. We can make those cards appear on the screen even. Now, I want to be able to hit, right? I'm not close enough to 21. I want to beat that mean looking dealer. So we need to make that happen. That being said, if you're just getting started on this high, we're picking blackjack game. It is awesome. It's 2D. All assets and code are in the description, which should be below me, hopefully. Oh, what you're seeing behind me should be the game. If you're lost, you probably need to go back and look at the other videos where we set up the, well, the beginning uh, parts of this program of this game. Today, we're going to focus on getting hit. Not like that, though, of course. Getting another card. And then we're going to also get that scoreboard up so we can keep track of our points, our money, and all of that. And the rounds of uh, buying or buying. And the round uh, betting pool. So... Yeah, let's just dive right in. Here we are. Here's our cards. And now we need hit cards. We need to be able to have the player get hit or for the real dealer to be able to do so, too. Now, this sprite, this image that we have for a card. Well, I will be using this same sprite. So honestly, like. Player, which I'm going to go click and click and duplicate. With those duplicated, let me head over to scene. you can kind of see how we're separating them. I'm actually going to put the cards that we're using for hits slightly close together and slightly off from the originally dealt cards. So if we're paying attention, X is 4.85 and then X is 2.85, so it's off by 2. Let's actually see if we can have that all the way across. And we cannot. So let's figure out what to do here. If it's separated by 2.5 right now, what if we set this? I don't think one is enough, but yeah. 4.5 if we want them to be close. 4.75 will give us a bit more distance. But we might need to keep it to, let's see, 4.5. And then if they're all 1.5 apart, this would be flat 6. And then this guy would be 7.5. And I do like that because it doesn't hit the border. These are a bit closer, but that's fine. They're going to be the cards that we get quote unquote, hit, quote unquote hit with. So this will be card four, five, if I can count. You know what? Let's restart labeling these for clarity's sake. Hit one. Now, depending on which, depending on which cards you want to be the hit first. I looked it up. It is possible for a player to have up to 11 cards in blackjack because of hits. So we're not going to hit that high. We're going to get to eight hits, two standard cards. But I think the chances of that 11 were like one in 300 million. So I figured we'll base it off of, you know, reality. Now I have this first row and these are all going to be hidden. I want to go ahead and create a second row. So I'm going to hold shift, select all these, click duplicate. And this second row, I want this to be the row of my first hit cards. So I'm going to grab these first few and pull them up. Let's see in relation. So this is at 2.6. Do I like? You know, I actually really like that distance. Perfect. There we are. So there's all the hits for the player. We are eventually going to hide these, but I'll leave them there for now just for ease. And then I'm going to grab all these, go ahead and duplicate, and pull them straight up. That looks good to me. There we are. We have all of the hit cards. Oh, let's go ahead and zoop. And I'm going to fast forward this, but I'm going to rename these so they don't have the ones. I also want this to be hit one. Perfect. And then let's just move these up. And then now how many cards do we have? Well, a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, add cards, right? So we now have a whole bunch more. I'm just going to zero this out. And now I'm going to grab all of these. Card one to the hit. And where'd it go? Oh, oh undo that. Dealer, lock, inspect. Try this again. Oop. Hand. There we are. All of them are populated. Head over to player, unlock, lock, and zoop, zoop. And now we have all these cards ready to go. 
which means we are ready for the hit button. Yay! So let's click over here and get that established. Hit clicked. So we're going to want to check if the player has less than 10 cards in their hand, because otherwise we'll be out of room in their array of cards. So if it is less than 10, we want to go ahead and get the card. We eventually will want to update the score text, which maybe we should add now. And then we're also going to want to check if the round's over. We don't have the round over script, but you know, to do list. Let's pause though and start with get card. So I'm going to hit save here. And while we're at our buttons, let's check if stand gets clicked and, or let's create the function for that. So when stand is clicked, we're actually going to keep track of how many times stand is clicked. So the reason we're doing that is because if stand has been clicked twice, then the game or the hand is over because the player can click stand. The dealer will automatically hit if it's above 16, just like at a casino or if it's below 16. And then the player gets one more chance to get some cards. So we don't have either of these declared yet, right? Hit dealer needs to be taken care of. And it will be different than the player because again, it should happen automatically as long as the dealer has less, uh, is holding less than 16, just like happens in casinos. And then stand text, we're going to update that. Once you hit stand, the second time you're actually calling, you're putting everything on the table. So I'm going to go ahead and create up here so we can change the button text right here. All right, stand, I could do button. There we are. Perfect. And now hit dealer. So again, this will be different. It's exclusive to the dealer. The first thing we'll do is that checking I just described. We're going to use a wall loop because we want to keep having the dealer hit as long as they're less than 16 and they have a broom on the table. They'll be using get card, though, just like the player, too. We're going to have something to update the dealer score on the screen on a heads up display, but not yet. And then this is also where I would put round over. And just like we will do for clicks, we'll check if the round is over or the hand. Okay, so that looks good as well. Now we are going to want to be able to monitor all of this activity within the game. So let's add to a heads up display right up here so we can keep track of our score, how much money we have, all of that stuff. Our first thing we need to do is add the actual board and I'm going to use a card. So create UI image. And let's just kind of move this up over here ish. And let's go to our sprites. And I want the blank one. So we have plenty of space. And then their native size is 140 times 190. So I'm actually going to set that here. Not because we're going to leave it by that, but because now we can see and multiply that to get it right, to keep that native aspect ratio. So maybe I want to do 140 times three. I can just put times three in there, and then I can do times three if I don't want to have to do the math myself. Right? And that's too big. I'm going to do control Z, control Z, and let's try times 2.5. And that's looking a bit better to me. Sure, negative 670. And then just say 320 maybe is looking nice. We could have this a bit larger, but I'm satisfied with how big it is. Let's check out. Yep, awesome. And now we just need some text. I want cash on hand. I want the value of the player's hand and then the bets. I'm calling this scoreboard. Oops, didn't want to add it with it in here. Let's go ahead and add text. So I know I'm going to want this split up and I know I'm going to need three. Let's see. The width is 350. 
So what if we do 100 for the height of these, and then 25 on each side? That looks a bit large. This way I can get this one dead center. This is going to be the cash on hand. And we know they start with 1,000, so boop, boop. That is itty bitty. Let's change this first to, let's try currency. And again, these are in the description, completely free to use. Ooh, that's a bit better. And I was going to go completely white because this background is a bit darker. And then centered, centered, and we can go larger than that. 80 is too big. I still want it overflow and overflow here. Oh, I actually like that a lot. Okay, excellent. So that is cash, sure, um, amount, or maybe just text. I want to make sure we know exactly what this is. All right, naming is important. And then this will be the amount they have in their hand currently. So 21, yay, you win that I am liking. And then we could have these two separate things, so we only update this, but I'm just gonna keep it as one. I find it easier. And finally, we need bet. And that will be the amount that they have currently bet. Wondering if we should do all cap. Nope, definitely not. All right, and I'm just going to make sure to move all these down a bit. This should be. Ta-da. And now we have a score. We also want when the round is over, we're going to show how much the. We're going to show the math of how much the dealer had. You could just look at all the cards. They will be displayed. But, you know, sometimes I'm lazy. So let's use this cache text and go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm gonna pull it all the way over here and I'm just gonna sneak this up above these cards. I'm gonna lower the size a bit. Add, I don't like. And I might increase the width a bit. And there we are. We'll just display that at the end of the hand. I would like it. To... I'm just gonna say hand. We know what it is because this is our hand. This is the dealer's. That looks better to me anyways. Great. So now we will hide that, but for now, for testing purposes, I do want it to be visible. So we have a heads up display, perfect. Let's get going on making it function, on making this work. So we are gonna want our game manager to have access to all of that uh, text we just added. Let's go ahead and put it in. And we already have our stand button text up here. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it and move it down here because that would make sense. And let's add some. We don't have main text, but say game over or you're out of money. We're going to have a main text. So I'm just going to do slash slash and put that in here. I'm doing slash slash so we know we don't have it created yet. And perfect. We're going to want also access to the card to hide it when the round is over, the dealer's card. So that one hidden card. And then let's keep track, of course, of the pot of how much is bet. Let's save all of that and get to updating it. Get to updating it with the game's input. Now, let's make some of that heads-up display work. Let's start first with the dealer. We want the dealer's score only to show when they have actually uh, finished a hand, right? The user, the player shouldn't be able to see the dealer's score all the time. So we do want to hide that. We're going to have to grab the game object to do so. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to place it above this. And it's called, yeah, it's not coming up here. There we are, dealer score text. And like I stated, it's a bit odd. We do the text, we then grab the game object of the text, and that gives us the flexibility to control its presence on the screen, uh, and we'll just set it to false. Quick comment. Let's add 
an update to the user's score, the player's score now. Let me comment here. Oop, I got to fix score.txt. I'll fix that beginning in a sec. Let's grab player script. Hand value. Now, we're going to be able to grab the hand value, and we want it to become a string. The reason we can do this, oh, also an equal sign. Let me fix this, like I said. So hand value, the reason we can grab it from the player script is that it's actually public. Let's take a look at it real quick. And right up here, you'll see how it is a public variable. And that's what is allowing us to grab it. It is an integer, and that's why we're setting it to a string. We could have a separate function for it, but eh, I'm just going to do it this way. We demonstrate that method in other parts of the program. So we need more again than this score text. Let's take a look. What we actually want is for it to say hand over here, right? So we're going to smack in score text, right? We're going to smack in the value of the hand. We're setting it to a string, but we're also going to place that within uh, adding it to hand. Boom. And now it will work. You might be wondering, well, wait a minute. Two string, is this needed? And depending on the language, C sharp, auto merge, JavaScript, auto merge, it kind of depends on concatenating with integers. I'm going to leave it there just for form to be clear what we are doing. All right. Now we have that score updating. And then let's also do the same thing for the dealer, even though we can't see his score all the time. I'm going to control C for copy and control V for paste. And this is going to be instead of score text, dealer score text. Dealer script, hand value, two string, hand. Yep, that's what we want there. So update the score displayed. Let's also make it so buttons aren't always visible depending on the movement. We don't want them to hit deal in the middle of a round or hit stand before they hit deal. So let's go ahead and have those buttons hitting at points. It's great for game flow and aesthetics. It's not a comment. Oh, totally a comment. And same deal here that we did with text, right? We did text and then game object and then set active. We're doing the same with the buttons. We're saying grab this button, actually get its game object and hide away. And since this is going to be kind of the same, copy, paste, paste. That looks good. And we need this to be hit. and stand. And we would want these two to be true, right? Because after they hit deal card or deal deck, we want them to be able to hit and stand, but we don't want them to deal again right away. That wouldn't make sense. They have to play the hand. And so we'll hide that button. Let's also make sure, since we're going to change stand to say call on the second press, let's make sure that when it is dealt, that stand currently will be saying stand. And then we haven't dove in too much into the bets, so let's talk money. We want to standardize pot size. Since my chip is 20 bucks, I'm going to say the first bet is going to be 20 or 40 combined. So what we'll need now is that bet. Let's start the part pot at 40. And we don't have all of these functions set to go. I'm going to put it in here and we'll talk. This is a function we do not have. And get money is also one we do not have. But let's get them in there, get them established. I'm going to hit save on all of this. And then let's go take a look. So now we're going to need adjust money and get money, which also means money should be up here. And it is. But uh, look, we prepared. All adjust money and get money is going to be and the reason I did this and not have money be public like I did with uh, hand is it felt more private. I also want to demonstrate what you would do if you do keep the variable at the top private to protect it from interference and what have you or data corruption and how you could still allow it to be accessed by outside classes. And this is how to adjust money. It could be a get or a set as well. And plus equals is just money equals money plus amount. It's just shorthand.
That's looking good. All right. Also, while we're here and I'm thinking about it, we have get cards. Let's talk aces because you know what has to do with money? Aces, ones, elevens, how you're counting and using that is important. So let's have a function. I don't really want to force the user to do math about the hand, right? We're auto totaling it. We're auto tallying it here. And let's have a function that does that ace part for them. If how that will work is if the aces are going to go high, if it's going to go over 21 here with an ace, it will drop the aces value to a one. So I'm going to get a creative name for that function. I'm lying. I'm going to name it ace check. And we're going to need a loop. It's going to be a for each loop. And so for each, what it's going to do then is each card script. And remember, that's what we're saving to our ace list. Where are we saving that? Right here. When we get the cards, we're checking if it's an ace. If it is an ace, we slap it into our ace list. What's this ace list? It's the card script. So it pulls out that uh, card script from it. And the reason we do that is we can adjust the values saved within our cards here. And then we can make sure that we're maximizing the user's score or the player's score. So now we're going to loop through each card script, each ace in this list. Zoop, zoop, zoop. We're just iterating through. And what do we want to do with them? Well, we need to check for that value. So let me get in this if statement and we'll talk about what it's actually doing. All right. So what are we doing? If the hand value plus 10 is greater than 22. So right now we know they have an ace. So we're going to loop through check. Now, if the hand value right now is more than 22 and and ace get value of card is equal to one. Uh, is less than 22. So if the hand value right now is less than 22, so they haven't hit 21. We're checking hand value plus 10. So I'm saying, hey, what if we counted this ace as an 11? Are we going to go over 21? Are we going to bust? No, we're not. Well, then what are we going to do? Okay, well, then. And again, plus equals is hand value equals hand value plus 10. So we're going to add 10 to our score. We're going to set the new value to 11 and just add 10 because our ace was equal to 1. Now here, what if that's not the case? What if we have busted? We're over 21, but we do have an ace. Well, let's see if that ace is currently equal to 11. Well, then I have a solution for you. Hand value minus equals 10. We'll subtract 10 from it. Let's just add some comments. That's looking great. And just to make sure, save everything. Let's give this stuff a shot. Oop, and oop. Here we are. First, we're going to have to go over to, oh, I left that as cash text. That should be the dealer. So dealer score or dealer hand. Some places I call it score, some places I call it hand. So I'm going to call it score everywhere. Really, it's this hand, what they have in their hand at that time. All right, now let's go over to Game Manager. Yeah, we have some stuff here. The score text, all right, dealer score text. And our hide card. Great, I'm gonna save all this. Let me just double check player. Nothing to fill in there. Deck. Also good. All right. And let's hit play. Deal. <laughs> there we are. So does it count them up? Yep. We got 18 down here. They're showing an ace. We have 40 for our initial pot. 20 from the player. 20 from the dealer. Notice, though, it didn't subtract 20 up here. We got to take care of that. Let's go ahead and hit and see. I know there's a the little functionality not there yet, but let's see what happens. Boom. So we do have it hit. It shows obviously I bust here and the score doesn't update. So we'll take a look at that because this will be game ending. And we don't have that element yet. Well, not game ending, but hand ending. 
Okay, let's now hit stand. Okay, this looks good. So at least the dealers hit flip over. We do want to be able to see this as well. And we want that text to pop up. But great, great, great. What we got in there so far is working. So let's piece together this last, these few things and then get going on the actual betting process. And that process, betting, obviously must be part of the blackjack game. So we're going to be diving into that next time. If you're making something super awesome, one, you should hit like and subscribe. Two, even if you aren't, you should, because, hey, you're using this. Three, you should tell me about it. If you're making something awesome, tell me about it below. I'd love to hear about it. And we're one step away from making Unity card game perfection. Ta-da!